what up what up Wimbush here and today i want to show you guys the latest update between cinema 4d using redshift and unreal engine now i'm on maxon.net right now and this press release just came out so if i scroll down here to the middle section it says that maxon is pleased to announce the immediate availability of an update to the cinema plugin for unreal engine and it's also going on to say that the added support for redshift camera and lights and also it's going to be adding to where we could do select only so if you have something selected within your object browser inside of cinema 4d you can only import that stuff if you choose so and also you can import different frame ranges so if you wanted to only import like frame 50 to 237 you also had that flexibility as well so the first thing that we want to do is we want to get set up with the brand new installer for Cineware. So you're going to come over to maxon.net. You're going to come up to products and then you're going to come down here to where it says Cineware. You're going to left click right here and then you're going to scroll down on a page until you see this big logo right here. And what we actually want to do is click on learn more because as we scroll down, we'll just see down here at the bottom. It's going to have the installer for Windows and the installer for Mac. Now this is the latest version as of right now to have these updates it's going to be 2023.2.2 so this is the version that you make sure that you're going to get and the cool thing about it is we no longer have to import it the old way where we had to drag and drop and make a marketplace folder and everything inside of the epic games folder now it comes with an installer so it makes everything that much more easier now moving on to Cinema 4D, this is a project file. If you saw my tutorial on School of Motion a few months ago, you might be familiar with this scene. EJ actually built this out, so it's a simple class simulation. Let me play it through. So down here, I'm just going to click on play, and you can see that we have this object rotating, and it's actually going to collide with the cloth. We have three different pieces of cloth in here that is actually reacting to everything in the scene, and it's just a nice, elegant scene, right? So what we're going to do is import this entire scene over to Unreal Engine, but let me first show you how I set this up. Now, there's a few key things that we want to make sure we note of. As of right now, for the cloth, you want to make sure that these are editable. So I just clicked on them and hit C. So you want to make sure that you're not using non-editable objects. I went over this in the previous tutorial, but if you didn't see that one, this is exactly how we're going to be able to get the class simulation into Unreal Engine. We no longer have to use Alembic files at all, which is really neat. Now, the thing about that is once you do this, you're going to have to do your class simulation over again. So with that selected, I'm going to clear the scene and then I'm going to cache the scene. But before I do that, let me also show you some other stuff in here. And so we have redshift lights, which we have these three right here. We can now import these lights, which is neat. And then over here, we have some redshift materials in which let me actually come over. I'm going to use one of the materials that was recently just added to the asset browser here. So I'm going to use this cloth one right here. Let me come back over here and then I'm just going to replace my cloth one with this one right here since this is brand new. And I want to show you some of the stuff that you might have to look out for when we bring over our redshift materials in the Unreal Engine. So with that all set up, we also have a redshift camera in here somewhere. There we go. We have this redshift camera. And so we're able to bring all this stuff over. So I'm going to actually come over and redo my cast simulation here. And then we're going to pick right up where we left off. Now that took a few moments, but let's play this back through. I'm just going to scrub through the timeline. You can see we have our class simulation going all the way through. This is at 60 frames per second, 450 frames. And just to reiterate, what I did was I made my cloth editable, just clicked on it, click C. And same thing I'm gonna do with the cylinder up here as well. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna click on C. Now we can bring over primitives to Unreal Engine, but the reason I did this was because sometimes when it comes to materials, Unreal Engine, it likes to have a UV properly set up for whatever objects you're bringing over. And so having this UV tag will actually do a lot for you whenever you go to retexture stuff in Unreal or even just bringing over textures in general. So we have our scene completely set up here. So the next thing I'm going to do is on my keyboard, I'm going to hit Control D. And what that's going to do down here in the attributes window, it's going to bring up our project setting. Now, the first thing I want to do is come over here to Cineware, and then I'm just going to select all of these on. And then for my texture here, I'm actually just going to multiply this by four. I'm going to bring over all the textures by 4K, PNG at 16 bit. Now, what we typically would do, we would save this out, but before we do that, there's actually one more step that I need to take. I need to make sure that these are actually baked out here. So what I'm gonna do is actually come up to my window and come down here. Let's look for a timeline under animation, the dope sheet. I'm gonna left click on this. Then I'm just gonna drag this up. And this side of my dope sheet, I wanna take my cloth. So I'm gonna take these three right here. I'm just gonna drag them, drop them into my dope sheet here. Make sure these are selected. And then I'm gonna come over to function and I'm going to bake the objects. 
now i did this in my previous tutorial but just a quick recap we're going to turn these off right here and then right here where it says pla i'm going to make sure this is clicked on and then i'm just going to click ok and let these bake out now the reason that we're doing this is because with the last version of the cinemaware update we no longer have to export out limbic files to be able to bring over these type of simulations into unreal engine we could just bring everything over in one great package with everything combined so it looks like everything is baked out here so it's going to make a copy for us because we had that selected so what i'm going to do is come over here in my objects panel i'm actually just going to delete the original ones and i'm just going to only keep the copy and then you can rename these again if you want but again i'm keeping the copied files and these are the ones with the keyframes all baked out so this is what my project currently looks like just to reiterate i have my cloth simulations with the keyframes baked in i have some redshift lights in here and my redshift camera and then I also have this cylinder in which I also made editable and everything has redshift textures on them. And I'm just going to bring this all over to Unreal. So now I'm going to hit Control D just one last time just to make sure everything selected that we need here under the Cineware tab, everything selected. So now I'm just going to come over, come over to File save project and just wait for everything to save out now since we are saving out a project file with a simulation in it you might notice that the cinema 4d project file is going to be a little bit larger and that's because it has everything baked into this one project file so previously in the past you would export them out as an limbic file and that limbic file might be a couple of gigs but now everything's just compressed all into one cinema 4d project so don't be alarmed if your cinema 4d project might be a couple of gigs so now that we have everything set up and saved out inside of cinema 4d now we're going to jump into unreal engine 5.2 and before we do anything i'm going to come up here to edit i'm going to come down here to plugins and then inside the search bar i'm going to type in cinema and you want to make sure that you have cineware by maxon selected if you install it it should be on by default but the version number you want to make sure that you have at least 0.8 or higher because this is the only way that any of these functions are going to work so again, you want to use Cineware by Maxon. You don't want to use the Data Smith importer. This is the old version. So I'm going to exit this out. And then the next step from here, I'm going to click on this box right here. This is quickly add the projects. It has the green plus sign. I'm going to left click on this. Then I'm going to come down here to Data Smith. And then I'm going to come down here to file import. So I'm going to select this. And once I do, you can see that we have our Cinema 4D project file right here. And if you look, I was talking about the file size earlier. It's around 2.8 gigs in there. So again, that's because we have our class simulation in there. So depending on all the stuff you have in your project, this file might be larger or smaller. But once we have that selected, I'm going to come down here to open. And that's going to bring up this selection window right here, which I'm just going to have everything come into my content folder. I'm going to click OK. And then that's going to bring up this import options right here, the data smith one. And so I'm going to leave everything check marked here by default. This is the new function I was talking about earlier where it says selection only. So if you have stuff selected inside of Cinema 4D that you only want to come over, you can check mark this on. But I want the entire project to come over, so I'm going to leave that off. And then also another new feature under animation, you could do custom frame range. And so if you have a custom set of frame ranges that you want to import, you can also select that there. But I'm going to bring over the entire duration, so I'm going to leave that as is. For my texture resolution, I'm going to leave it at 4K. And then down here, you actually want to import geometry caches because we do have that cloth simulation. And so I'm going to leave everything checkmarked down here. And then I'm going to click on import. And then we're just going to wait for Cineware to initialize and load up all the modules here. And once that's done initializing, you're going to have this new menu come up. This is select which objects you want to import as geocache. So once you select geocache, this menu is actually going to come up. And so the only ones that have simulations for is this cloth right here cloth number two and then cloth number three now the cloth surface we can leave it off because we only have the geocache connected to our cloth right here but everything's going to come in as imported so again you only want to select the ones that you actually have geocache coming in for and so i'm going to click ok and now you should see that it says process and frames and it's actually going to count up now this part depending on the duration of your scene might take a little bit depending on the specs of your machine as well so i would just let this go and let it cook and bake for a little bit and then we're going to come right back to it now once again that's going to take a few moments but once it's all done we have everything inside of unreal engine so if i just come into my viewport fly up here you can see everything looks kind of blowing out and that's because everything we have set in our camera settings inside of cinema 40 translated over so let me actually look through my cinema 40 camera but first i'm going to delete a few things like the floor i don't need this as well and then i'm going to come down here till we have a content browser 
inside of my animation folder i'm going to double click on this and then this first sequence right here i'm going to double click on this and this is where we're going to see everything at now inside of my search bar i'm just going to type in camera because we have so many items that this was kind of buried so now we see our redshift camera you can pick either one i'm just going to pick this top one to look through it and now when i play through it you can see everything came over but you can see that our cloth looks a little bit weird here so let's address this first i'm actually going to click on this cloth and i'm going to scroll up here inside of my details panel and if i come down here to where it says materials i'm actually just going to double click on this and this is going to open up our materials panel now the first thing you might notice is that everything is grayed out there's no color to it our original material inside of cinema had like a bluish tint to it so what i'm going to do is actually under here right at the top here you can see that it says show and active now if i left click on this now you see we have an extra attribute that popped in here so i can hit on diffuse color and now if i come over let's just change this to more of like a bluish tint you can pick the exact blue color if you have the attribute numbers down here but i'm just going to stick with this one right here and then once i do that i'm just going to turn off the use diffuse map right here and now you can see inside of our viewport we got our color back inside of our material now the next thing you'll notice is that our material is actually see-through and so to address that i'm actually going to come over here all the way down here to the bottom and right here where it says material property overrides i'm going to click on this and let me drag this up a little bit more and right here where it says two-sided i'm going to turn this on and click save and now you see we have our full material there and when we play it back we have everything playing back inside of unreal engine now the next thing i'm going to do is actually come over here and if i come right here under uvs you can see that we have use uv offset tiles so if i click on this this is how we're going to actually be able to do some tiling offset here so i'm going to do tile u tile v you can actually make this like five by ten something like that so that's how you're going to be able to control the uvs inside of your material there so go through and play with that until you get something that matches and make sure you hit save up there and now i can exit this out and now if i just come through play it through now you can see we have our cloth material in here we have our red shift material in here and we have our camera and lights in here as well so if i come over here to my outliner you can see we actually have i can actually delete my source light there that's the unreal engine one i'm going to delete that delete my sky sphere skylight delete everything except for what's brought over from cinema 40 like so if i scroll this to, actually let me just turn this off you can see that light turned off there i come to my key light so you can see that we're actually controlling the lights that are brought over from cinema 4d and these are redshift lights as well and then also we have a redshift camera of course and so that's everything coming over from cinema 4d from redshift of course with the materials there's going to be some caveat like no subsurface scattering and a few more other things but this is a great implementation to an update of something that a lot of people have been asking for so hopefully that gets you started working with Cinema 4D and Redshift into Unreal Engine. Hopefully I covered a lot of those caveats that you might be having whenever you're bringing some stuff over. Again, everything might not come over one to one, so you might have to jump into material, kind of finagle it a little bit. Same thing with the lights, but the lights for the most part, everything came over as is from Cinema 4D. So there shouldn't be a lot of legwork that you have to do on the back end there. So hopefully this helped you out. If it did, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you can, leave me a comment down below. Maybe Maybe there's some tips and tricks that you guys have figured out as well that might help with this conversion. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.